Time now to answer some of your business questions. We are talking about running multiple businesses today. So let's get our board of directors in here to help us out. Eric Casabiri is back with us, and Gene Marks is here too. He is the founder and president of the Marks Group and a columnist for the Washington Post. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. I'm, I'm so glad we're focusing on this today because I feel like so many people are doing more than one thing. I know I do, I know you do, I know you do. I mean, here we go, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's get to the first question. It's an email from Marilyn, who's in the restaurant business at the Jersey Shore and she writes my company is looking for expansion opportunities in Staten Island and South Florida to balance our seasonality how do I seek out a working partner with skin in the game in an area I'm not familiar with what do you think Gene well there's first of all you, you want to reach out to the contacts and the people that you know but you know when I think about people looking into different areas of the country where they want to work um, you know she might want to consider either buying into another business or at least partnering with somebody really good website that I've used for other clients um, biz buy sell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. com right have you probably heard of them before mm -hmm. I mean it is there's a lot of sites out there that offer like you know brokerage services but this is a place where you can go to buy and sell businesses so whenever clients come to me and say look I'm looking to expand into another area I don't know anybody there um, I kind of point them to that site first because right there you'll be able to see other people in your business in your industry looking to sell their businesses they look for partnership opportunities as well good place to make a connection so that's my advice on that it's a great idea mm -hmm. I, and it's also hard though to partner with someone she's talking about someone to basically manage this mm -hmm. um, um, for her in an entirely different place where you don't have great oversight. Oh, yeah. How do you partners, deal with that? Partners are for dancing, JJ. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you have to have a partner and, and uh -huh. you're looking for a magic partner, it's a great idea. Um, but what I would say would be to, you know, great talent's not made, it's found. Mm -hmm. So I would go into the local restaurants, you know, kind of like what, what Gene said, I would go down to this, I'd go down to South Florida. Scout out every one of the best places that, that, that everyone talks about. Who's got the, the, the highest attendance? Who's, who's got the, who's in every review and getting five stars? And then go and steal that person's manager. Mm -hmm. Go and steal that person's chef. Right, right, right. It's, it's, it's just business. We, we're not here to make friends. Star winning. We're here to win. Right, got it. Okay, good advice. Moving up, moving on, I mean, we have a question from Welly about the right time to grow. And she asks, when does it make sense to expand to other cities? We've been growing quite quickly in New York City, and we're thinking about adding new locations in other cities. I'm wondering what kind of milestones are critical to reach before that. So we talked about how you find someone once you decide to grow. How do you even make that decision to go in the first place? Uh, growth is 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 it's an interesting anomaly in business and it, there's so many different facets to geographic expansion. I always tell my franchisees and I just recently spoke to a, a budding franchisor and I gave him this advice. I said start in your own backyard mm -hmm. and truly develop your backyard. Right. Before you go and try and find someone else's backyard, right. you've got to own yours because if you start looking outside of New York and you look into Florida, you, you, might, you may forget about New York and it may not be finished growing. Yep. You've got to really cultivate what's in your backyard first. So my advice would be to first really understand if you've completely fulfill the whole footprint of where you are today before you look at the next area of geographical expansion mm -hmm. and then you really have to have a plan a real plan in place I, really, I, I love that advice let me even jump on that I mean um, I, I one of my favorite books of all time is the e-myth by Michael Gerber I would say yep. this iconic great book right and like the whole point of, of Michael's book is, is he says you know businesses should be able to run on their own they should be sustainable right mm -hmm. they should have processes organization and management where you as the owner JJ you should be able to walk away from the business and it should be that's like what a franchise does like a McDonald's you know they should be self-sustainable so you know is your business running on its own I mean are you in a situation right now have you brought it to that level where now you can go out of your hometown and look for businesses somewhere else and leave your business for a few months while you go and try to expand somewhere else if you're not at that level then I, I just don't think you're really ready to expand yet you know we did a story a few years back on um, a company that it, it did child like a fun place to drop your kids off and right. child activities and they're really smart about it from the very beginning when they opened their store they codified every everything right they had this big book here are all of our classes here's how we do everything right so that when it came time to expand they could just say here you go that, that's and essentially the franchise model that's it exactly is. Right. Yes. That's and I'm sure that's what you teach your yeah. franchisees right I mean Every if day. they lose people they should be able to slot somebody else in there because there's procedures there's a training policy there's a way right. and the, but they were doing this even for company owned yep yeah. right? Right. So, right which is awesome yep right. all right let's move on to the next question it's from Willine and she writes I have more than one business and would like some ideas on social media Media for all of my businesses, would you suggest different Facebook pages, separate Twitter accounts, and 
business specific LinkedIn accounts all under my name. The markets are different and so I'm looking for some ideas. Great question because it, it it's is. hard. It's a lot to manage them all. It is and if you don't mind, like, I just wrote about this like in Forbes a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I interviewed um, this woman and she's a social media manager at 3M, right? So you can't get any more boring than 3M, right? They make like <laughs> industrial products. They do post-it notes yeah. and do whatever. Um, and I asked her that exact same question. Big company, thousand employees, you know, like dozens, hundreds of products. Do you guys just have like one, you know, social media? And the answer is no. I mean, they have they have an at 3M Twitter account, but then they have at 3M Racing because they have a whole bunch of racing other racing car products and and what they sponsor. Post-it notes has its own Twitter of it handle, does, right? right? <laughs> of course. So you know what I learned from that is that look, if you're a business and you've got separate, distinct brands within your business, or you've got multiple companies, um, there, there's no rule that says you have to have one social media presence. You should be dividing it up so that your fans are getting the content that they want to get, with the, what they're interested. I mean, it makes complete sense, right? I, because you want to be as specific as possible. That's the whole point of social media is that you can get these niches. For someone like you, mm -hmm. who your brands are interrelated, right? You have gyms, you have nutrition products, so they're related. They're not the same. They're not the you same, do. and they have their own. Uh, again, to what Jean said, they have their own distinct environments in social media, and but they do play off each other. So right. we we have a commonality with fitness with nutrition products. So we'll flash on each other's pages, but they're completely independent. The the, the gym member isn't necessarily the the supplement taker, and the supplement taker is not necessarily the gym member right. every time. There is some overlay, and 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 we make those work. But every business, I know it's more costly and it's more time consuming, but yeah. you need to have their own identities with their own brand awareness and and talking to that specific customer. And, and that's exactly also right. If you're going to have like separate social media accounts, it, it costs more, right? I mean, you have to, it's more time. overhead, it's more time, whatever. So you got to be prepared to do that. Right. All right. Gene, Eric, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Great thank you. to see you today. Great to see you as well. If any of you out there have a question for our experts, we answer them every single week here on the show so you can get some great advice. The address is openforum.com.